Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you to all of those, all of you who have tuned in today to hear about the new strategy for the Irish Hospice Foundation. My name is Jean McKernan, and I am the chair of the Irish Hospice Foundation. And together with Sharon Foley, our CEO, we will bring you through the main points of our strategy. We hope you enjoy our presentation. Thank you. Okay, everybody, good afternoon. This is our strategy, and it's available now online at Irish Hospice, Irish Hospice Foundation .ie. You can send all questions and comments into us at info at Hospice Foundation. And for those Twitter fans out there, it's Twitter at Irish Hospice. We'll be watching all of your correspondence. We'll be coming back to your replies. So we expect a lively chat in the afternoon. We're also going to be making a tour of all the hospices around the country to explain our strategy, to meet with the senior management teams and to find out about their work and to communicate as well to our partner organisations. The vision of the Irish Hospice Foundation is that no one will face death or bereavement without the care and support they need. Our mission is to strive for the best care at end of life for all. There is only one chance to get dying, death and bereavement right. We believe everyone has the right to be cared for and die with dignity and respect in the care setting of their choice. So what do we mean by care at end of life? So when we say care at end of life or end of life care, we're referring to all aspects of care relating to dying, death and bereavement. So end of life can be the time of diagnosis, the months before death, the last hours of a person's life or the experience of loss and grief. It also includes access to palliative care and that's the care given to a person who has a life limiting illness and which aims to provide and achieve the best quality of life for patients. So before we begin, let me remind you what the Irish Hospice Foundation does. So lots of you are already familiar with our work, and thank you again for, for supporting us by tuning in today. You know we deliver a range of targeted work programs, and each one of them in their own way strives for care at end of life. So it might be a direct program, or it might be working through staff and partner organisations who themselves deliver care to patients at end of life. So we have a number of activities which aim to reach those facing end of life. Some are in the community, such as our night nursing services, or at home. Some are in nursing homes, that's our Changing Minds Journey of Change programme, in hospitals, as well as working alongside our colleagues in hospices to promote access to specialist, specialist palliative care in all care settings. You'll also know that we aim to inform and able debate with the public to, for all aspects of dying, death and bereavement through a very strong communications and advocacy program and many of you will be aware of our Think Ahead program which encourages people to think and talk about end of life. So why do we want to care for people at end of life and where is it that people die? Well you know that people die in a range of settings so 43% of people die in acute hospitals and that's remained fairly steady over the last number of years. 26% of people die at home but actually when you ask well people on the street 74% say ideally they'd like to be able to die at home. So we know, know that a little bit more can be done there. We know that 25% die in a long care um, setting, such as a nursing home, and 6% die in a hospice. And we want to make sure wherever people die, they get the best care that they deserve and they require at the end of their life. And for those left behind, we want to see that they are supported through their bereavement. So in our opinion, what needs to change? Well, we think palliative and end-of-life care services should be a national priority. We were delighted to see in the recent programme of government a very strong commitment to palliative care. That's really encouraging. However, we think palliative and end life services are inconsistent and that everybody should have equal access to the services they require according to their needs. We think bereavement is inadequately addressed in Ireland and the forthcoming National Palliative Care Framework makes a commitment to the development of standards and we really welcome that. We think more can be done to enable people to think, talk and plan for end of life and our Think Ahead programme is seeking to address some of these, of these issues. We also think there needs to be more training for staff in end-of-life bereavement and palliative care. It's not widespread and it's not consistent. And if we want the best care at end-of-life to be delivered throughout Ireland, you have to support staff. So, our strategy over the next three years. We have four goals. And in the strategy, you find for each goal, we've outlined what we want to achieve and what our targets are for 2019. Of course, these targets are, are con contingent on us working well with you and all of our partners. And we think we achieve great things with good teamwork and great and respectful partnerships and relationships. 
So our first goal is innovating excellence in palliative end-of-life and bereavement care. I explained some of the programs that we had before, and we'll be continuing our commitment to our hospice-friendly program, hospice-friendly hospitals program, our journey of change program in, in residential care settings, our primary palliative care program, our palliative care for all program, and our nurses for night care. And our nurses for night care services is a service that provides night nursing for patients at end of life with diseases other than cancer. And the coming three years, we've been lobbying and advocating very strongly to ensure there's state, serv- state support for night nursing. We think it's time that that service is moved to become a state service. We'll also be promoting and supporting the development of bereavement standards. So there's lots more about that in the strategy. Our second goal is enhancing end of life care and bereavement through education and training. Lots of you will be familiar with our education and training program, programs. We have a strong um, formal education program uh, run with our partners, RCSI, but we also have an outreach training and development program, and we will continue that program. This program enhances communication, compassion, and competence in end of life care. We have an, an education grant program, and even more than that, we'll be looking to influence the development of education in other areas by working with our partners. Our third goal is driving debate and policy change on key issues relating to dying, death and bereavement in Ireland. You'll see a lot more in our strategy about public engagement. We really want to strengthen that in the, in the coming years. We also want to keep our strong external communications programme working. It's very important that we raise awareness of all issues relating to end of life, dying, death and bereavement, so that people are aware of what needs to change. We'll be working with you, our partners. We've made a strong commitment in our strategy to strengthen relationships, particularly with the voluntary hospice movement and our partners working in specialist palliative care. We'll also be committing to work very clearly with our political and, and NGO or non-government organisation partners to make sure that end of life becomes more of a priority for those organisations. And finally, our fourth goal is enhancing our credibility and sustainability. So everybody who's involved in charities knows the importance of having a strong, transparent financial system, very good governance of the charity, but also having a very strong fundraising strategy. Our, in, in, the way we work and our independence comes from being able to fund our activities, so we want to make sure that our fundraising as, is as good as it can be. So that's it from us. We just want to say thank you for coming along this afternoon. And finally, um, the staff in the IHF, Sharon Foley and I, would like to remember our founder, Dr Mary Redmond. Dr Mary Redmond established the IHF 30 years ago, uh, a woman with great vision, a qualified lawyer and a great philanthropist. So uh, for the last 30 years, we have, li- we have followed her legacy and we are still doing so, and that is all reflected in our strategy today. So on behalf of everyone in the IHF, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in. Thank you.